Hey guys, it's Ishani, aka Total Makeup Junkie 101. So I know what you guys are thinking, Ishani, darling, what the heck is wrong with your hair? I decided to try some heatless curlers last night, and let's just say it didn't go over too well. So I tried to fix it to the best of my ability, but I still feel like my hair looks really frizzy and weird and it's just, we're just gonna ignore it. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about a new exciting palette release by Juvia's Place. This is the Magic Palette. This is the newest eyeshadow palette release from Juvia's Place and tons of people were super excited about it. Juvia's Place has been kind of teasing this palette for quite a while now. In case you guys didn't know, I do already have reviews videos for these two Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes on my channel, the Masquerade and the Saharan palette. I will go ahead and link both of those review videos down below in case you guys are interested. Obviously today we will be talking about the new Magic palette. This palette does retail for $35 on the Juvia's Place website. I did go ahead and pull up my receipt here so I could tell you guys the palette retails for $35. I did use a 10% off coupon code which took off $3.50 but they did charge $5.95 of shipping. So total I paid $37.45 for this palette. I think given the size and everything you get in this palette, that's a really, really fair price. So as you guys may know, Juvia's Place palettes are all inspired by African culture. And this palette in particular says that it was inspired by the moon and sun goddesses of the wilds. I think that's pretty cool. You can clearly see you have a sun goddess and a moon goddess here. And and can I just say, both of their makeups look so, so beautiful. That's besides the point. So the palette just pops open with a magnetic closure, no mirror as there is no mirror in any Juvia's Place palette. And then you are getting 16 eyeshadows. You guys can probably tell that this is the large size of the Juvia's Place palettes. This palette right here is the same size as the original Masquerade palette. You guys can see the pans are the exact same size as well. And just to give you guys another visual, if you guys have the Saharan palette, you can see how much larger the pans in the Magic palette are. Let's go ahead and jump right into swatches of this entire palette. I went ahead and swatched the top two rows together and then the bottom two rows together so you could see kind of all the warm sun goddess colors and all of the cool moon goddess colors together. So here are the top two rows in the Magic palette. From left to right, we have Nubia, Zakia, Osun, Kesi, Zuba, Nana, Buranu and Kogi. As you guys can tell, these colors are really, really beautiful. I will say that the matte shadows in these two rows, with the exception of the last one, Kogi, they don't really swatch out very well in a concentrated swatch, but they do perform well on the eyes. So here we have swatches of the third and fourth rows in the palette. Pardon my pronunciation on these names. They're not exactly in English, but from left to right, we have Faso, Aja, Vi, Yemoja, Ife, Yara, Buzo, and Yajide. As you can see, the majority of these colors are foiled, metallic, shimmery. There are two dark matte colors, which as you can see, do not swatch out well at all. So those were the swatches of this entire palette. Now let's just go ahead and jump into talking about the texture and pigmentation of the shadows. First off, let's talk about the foiled finish shadows, which we all know Juvia's Place does really, 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 really well. There are 10 different foiled finish shadows in this palette and they are all absolutely stunning. I've said this in my previous Juvia's Place palette reviews, but the foiled finish shadows really do remind me of the Makeup Geek foiled shadows. They are super, super dense, very creamy, very pigmented. I love using these either with my fingers or with brushes. This is a foiled eyeshadow texture that works equally well if you pack it on with a stiff, flat brush or with your fingers, which can't really be said about all foiled finishes because sometimes they'll start to develop a hard pan on the surface of the product or the brush just won't pick up the pigment and these work really well with brushes. Now in terms of the matte shadows, which there are six, these two, these two, this one, and this one, I will say that the matte shadows overall are quite a bit stiffer than 
previous Juvia's Place mats. I don't know exactly why that is, but when I swatched at least most of these matte shadows with my fingers, I was really, really disappointed in the pigmentation. However, with that being said, they perform really, really well on the eyes. I didn't have any problems picking up the matte shadows on a brush because they are a little bit stiffer. They didn't kick up a lot of powder at all. I got almost no fallout when I was using these shadows and you can see the eye look I have today I only use this palette and it's pretty bold and pretty bright and the amount of fallout I had was so minuscule considering I was using some of the boldest darkest most vibrant shades in this palette and quickly just to let you guys know what I'm wearing on my eyes I went into my crease with Nana which is this really pretty warm matte brown I used Faso or Faso all over my eyelid. This is the most beautiful lilac with a very, very strong teal duochrome in it. I went in with Yamoja on my inner corners and then I used Ife or Eif um, on the outer corners to really darken this look. My biggest worry with using this dark, dark matte purple is that it was going to be really stiff because when I swatch it with my fingers, it felt really dry and it didn't deposit a lot of color. But actually, when I went into it with a crease brush, it really, really did deposit a lot of color. You can see it did get really, really smoky on my eyes, but the amount of fallout was a very, very minimal because it is a stiffer shadow but I also didn't have a lot of trouble blending like I thought I would. Even though these matte shadows may not swatch well or look very pigmented when you see kind of a concentrated arm swatch, just use them with brushes because they actually work amazingly. Now in terms of the color selection, I will say that I am very, very happy. As always, I've said this over and over again, but Juvia's Place really impresses me with the amount of unique colors and unique shadows they include in their palettes. Some of these colors I honestly don't think I own in any other form. Like this color right here, kind of like a teal, steel gray type color. This is probably my favorite color in the entire palette. You can see I've like dug my brush into that because I've been using it quite a bit. And although this palette does follow suit with other Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes in the amount of unique colors they have, I think I really, really like this palette because I do feel like it's a good standalone palette. Because you are getting a matte light color, you're getting a really good matte transition color, at least for my skin tone. You're also getting a couple of other matte basics, like some dark colors for liners, a nice, really beautiful, warm color over here. And then of course, you're getting your beautiful foiled shadows, which can be used all over the eyelid to provide a gorgeous pop of color but I do think this is a very well-rounded palette I didn't necessarily think like the masquerade palette was completely well-rounded I never use this palette just by itself I always feel the need to bring in a dark brown or a black and like a matte highlight color but this kind of has everything so overall would I recommend this palette absolutely i really really love it i think it falls right in line with the quality that i expect from juvia's place the only thing i would say is different than the previous palettes i've tried is that the matte shadows overall are just a little stiffer but they don't kick up extra powder they don't provide a lot of fallout they're still very blendable so I have no issues with this palette at all. Alrighty, so wrapping up this review, let's go ahead and do a couple of housekeeping things. First off, let's talk about the price per gram breakdown. So as you can see, you're getting 16 pans of product in this palette. Each of these pans holds 3.6 grams of product, which is a lot of product. That means that you're getting 57.6 grams of product total in this entire palette, which once again, that is a lot of product. And dividing that into the $35 that you're paying for this palette, that means that you are paying 61 cents per gram, which is a complete steal. Honestly, anything that's under a dollar per gram is 
a bargain. It's an amazing bargain. And the best part about this is that it doesn't feel like you're getting bargain quality at all. These are some of the best shadows I've ever used. I love my Juvia's Place shadows. And I mean, the price is just the icing on the cake, but I would happily pay double or even triple for this palette. It's that good. Finally, I did want to go ahead and talk about the ingredients and where this product is made. It says it on the back of the unit cart in here. So the number one ingredient in this formula is talc followed by magnesium stearate and mica. There is also mineral oil and kaolin in this formula so if that is a problem for you just keep that in mind. Juvia's Place does claim to be cruelty free and while this product is created and formulated in the U.S. it is made in China. That wraps up today's video. In case you guys didn't know yet I did start my own makeup line. We have six lipsticks which you can shop through that link up there. I will also go ahead and put a subscribe link to my channel right down there for you guys. But that is everything. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, supporting, and subscribing. And I will talk to you guys in my next video on Monday. I will see you then. Bye!